of their financial freedom business. So particularly if you're a newer executive, you've got to be spending on the top end of that 75% of your time recruiting because now you've been granted or earned the opportunity to build something really big. Uh, any other national consultants in here? Let me talk to the national consultants in here. You better be spending 60% of your time recruiting and personally building a list and looking for new people because if you're very successful at this, people are going to code out on you. They're going to build their own teams. They're going to change team names. Things are going to go all over the place. Remember I said you're herding cats? And if you don't bring new people in when you even hit national, if you're not building your business, your business is going to compress. Now the good news is if you're an executive or a national, you've already got a, a pretty big income going. But what's amazing in this business, we're, we're all, cause this is training, this isn't presentation, you can't say these things in a presentation, but how many people in here would like to earn $5,000 a month? Keep your hand up if 10000 sounds better to you. My biggest heartbreak in this business is the number of people I've helped mentored and worked with to get them to executive consultant, get them to eight, ten, twelve thousand a month, and they go into retirement mode. They manage what they have and they quit doing what got them there. And I just want to grab them and shake them and say, you know, if ten thousand is pretty cool, wouldn't twenty five thousand be better? And if there's people making hundreds of thousands, why do you want to stop? You may not need the money, but there'll be somebody a generation or so from now. I mean, what do, what do, you know, I talk about money a lot and people tell me all the time, they say, Steve, you know, money won't buy happiness. I say, I like to quote the greatest philosopher in my life, said money won't buy happiness. That was Billy Gibbons, lead guitar player for ZZ Top. I told you I'm not very deep. Billy said, money won't buy happiness, but it'll put you in a real fine car and you can pull right up next to happiness on the freeway. <laughs> and I realized after we laughed that what he meant is money buys options. It buys the chance to help other people. Um, you know, it's not that big a thing, I'm bragging, but I tell you what, I gave more to charity in the last few years than I did the whole other 50 years of my life because it's amazing how much easier it is to give when you know they're going to direct deposit some more next week. So what do rich people do with money? What do they, what do they mostly do? Donate. Try to give it away. As soon as they become million or multi-millionaires, their whole life, look at the really big ones, the multi-billionaires. They've got whole foundations and huge staffs and teams of people just focused on how to give their money away. And it's it's pretty amazing thing. And I think that's a noble cause. But it's hard to do when you're making less money. So don't, don't be bashful about money. By the way, I want to give you a book to read if you had never read it. Um, Besides my book, I think that my, my book, by the way, is a textbook on how to build a business. You ought to get that relationship marketing and, and read it once for fun and laugh at me and then go back and highlight it and just follow the steps because I'm, that's just me talking to you about how I got to the top of this. But the book I was talking about is Steve Siebold, great guy, and the book's called How Rich People Think. He studied... Thousands of rich people, everything from common millionaires to billionaires, and he found out there is a difference. It's not where they're from or their education or what their family had. Most of the difference is they think differently. And it's, it really helps you to read it more than once and start training yourself to think like a wealthy person. For instance, middle class people buy things based on how it makes them feel. Wealthy people before they buy anything, consider how it's going to affect their future. And those little things, I'm not going to try and recite the book to you, but that was a big light bulb moment for me. You know, of course, in the energy business, we like light bulb meetings. So, so management, uh, that's something the corporate staff does for the employees because their employees have to do what they say. You are starting a volunteer army, and they're only going to do what you do, not what you say. And if you, at the end of the day, you should ask yourself before you go to bed, you know, right, right before you say your prayers, you need to be saying, if everybody on my team did what I did today, how would we be doing? There's some days I say that and I think, you know, I've got to do better tomorrow because if I'm slacking, they'll slack. And that's a, 
Fantastic question. Any other questions? Next thing come. Yes, sir. Steve, I'm sure I'm not the only one having this issue. I can get people to come and look at the business. I can get them on a three-way call. I have a lot of trouble closing the deal. I have a lot of trouble. Either they're not seeing it or there's something I'm not doing to help them see it. Any thoughts on that? Two or three things I want to talk about. First, you make me want to rewind a little bit and remind you that you don't have to be a great closer. You don't have to be a great presenter. You don't have to be able to speak in front of the room. You do have to learn to be a master inviter. Your job is to invite people to take a look at the business. Uh, for most people, I always invite them first to a live presentation because the sign-up rate of a guest in here is like 80%. So, I mean, go for the best odds. They usually balk when you invite them to come out unless you're bribing them with dinner or drinks or something. But as soon as they say no to that, then you can back up and say, well, you know, I know you don't want to take the time to do that right now, but would you help me out with my business? Just take a look and tell me if it makes sense to you. and Give me some advice. It only takes five minutes. It's a video. I'd like to like you to watch a video. So that's just the invitation process. I say uh, I like to practice it in front of a mirror, my invitation, because then I know my next audience is going to be a lot better looking, right? <laughs> so good way to do it. But you really want to get your, your pitch, if you will, down so that when, when you bump into somebody, it comes right out. And, and my, mine is, I, my name's Steve Thompson. I'm spearheading the expansion of a company called Ambit Energy. We're showing people how to save money on utilities and how to make a lot of money saving other people money on utilities. It may or may not be for you, but not getting the information could be the worst financial mistake you ever made. I got to go right now, but why don't you give me your email address and I'll send you a link so you can take a look at it. Pick out something like that and practice it to the point that it doesn't matter where it is. I mean, you know, I'm, I'd be asleep at night, somebody poked me, and I'd say, I'm spearheading the expansion. Of, and, and the whole point is, uh, what I break down there is, I'm spearheading Ambit Energy. I have been for almost 10 years. You know who put me in charge of spearheading? I did. And you are hereby anointed spearheaders, okay? <laughs> so take that, be in charge, be big and bold, and that's one thing that leads to where you're going. If you show boldness, excitement, intensity, and a sense of urgency before they look, then they've picked up some of that urgency when they look, and that makes them more apt to it. Definitely use the three-way call. I'm proud to hear you're using that because the three-way call is the greatest closing tool there is. It's not meant to put them in the business. On a scale of one to ten, most people are about a five or six when they say they'll look at it. And we hope the five-minute presentation made them a six or seven. And the, the closing speaker, the expert, if you will, his job is to move them up to an eight or nine so they're ready to see something that might make them join. Now, I do three-way calls every day, all day, and frequently they, they do join. But when they join, I tell their sponsor immediately, Here's what you need to do. You need to go to a planning session because they're not in Ambit until Ambit's in them. Signing them up is not the end goal. That's the start. That's batter up. You've got to get them going. Now, that wove me around to where you are. First off, if you've shown them a video or a live presentation, you put them on a three-way call that was executed properly, and they're not ready to join, they're not ready to join. It's all about timing, and it's not your timing. It's their timing. The last person I signed up, I have talked to for nine and a half years. I gave up talking to him. I just happened to call him. I was going into Austin where he lives. I still got a home there. And I just called him and said, hey, you want to get together and have lunch? He said, sure. And I met him on the way into town. We sat and having lunch. He said, hey, by the way, I want to talk to you about that ambient thing. <laughs> and I said, now, ambient's what you take to sleep after you understand it. But... I, I said, sure, sure, and we got our food and sat down, and he said, uh, tell me how, how, I know it's going good, I've seen how your life is, but is there still room in this? Is there still opportunity in this? I said, man, it's exploding everywhere, and we hadn't even left the country yet, the whole world beckons, it's going to be huge. He said, well, there, is there still time for me? I said, you know, I'm sorry, but we're full up. <laughs> and he looked at me like I was stupid, and I said, no, man, why don't you follow me over to my house and let's take a look at a video and understand how it works. And we went home to my house. We watched the video. I answered a few questions and sponsored him. He got started in the business. And 
you know, that's the only thing I got to tell you is that I, I asked him when I joined in October of 06, and, and he just got right on it nine plus years later. So, but he gets to go back on your list. So long as you're polite, you say, hey, I understand it's not the right time for you if you need more information. And then I always say, since this is September, I'd say, if you were the prospect, I'd say, listen, it doesn't sound like it's a good time for you right now. You've got a lot going on. Would you mind if I circle back with you in December and just check in, tell you how I'm doing? Get that approval to call them back. Keep them on your list. Somebody does not get off your list unless they join or they say no so strongly that they say something like, if you call me again, I'm going to call the police. <laughs> and then I always say, you really should call them one more time because they might be bluffing. <laughs> But I'm serious about stay on that list. And if they don't get it, by the time they've seen a presentation, done a three-way call, you should be asking yourself, do I have time to work with this person? Because they're not getting it. If they're not getting it, they're certainly not excited about it. And if they're not excited, the first group of pitfalls will put them out of business. It's a great question, but let me tell you, um, eight out of ten people you ask to look at Ambit will not look. You cannot know what you do not know. They don't know, so they're not going to look. But I teach a formula for part-time people called 222. You might want to write that down. Every day, you call two people from your prospect list. Just two. Every day, the second two is you follow up, but you want to learn to call the most important two. Those are the ones that will matter the most. And then every day, I have people everywhere always say, man, I'm out of people. I've, I've talked to everybody I know. I said, really, both of them? You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm tacky sometimes. But the point is, every day, make a point of meeting two new people. And there you're doing, you're not selling Ambit, you're not even talking, or you're avoiding Ambit. When, it, when you meet people, it needs to be like you did when you were a six-year-old. It'd be, you know, ma'am, can I pick on you? Oh, yeah. And we're in the grocery store together, and I say, hey, how are you? Good. I'm doing good. Hey, do you live around here? Uh, yeah. Here in McKinney? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do you, are you married? Have a family? Uh, yeah. And seven grandkids. Seven grandkids. Wow, you had your first kid when you were like 12? Uh, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of twins in that family. I say, well, that's great. Uh, I, uh, I'm not from here, but I'm here every once in a while. I'm spearheading the expansion of a company that's showing people how to save money and make money. But I don't really want to talk about that. What I want to know is more about you. Always go back to what's a person's favorite subject? <coughs> Themselves, which is their children and grandchildren. That's what's most important. Tell me about your kids. Sounds like they're grown. Where do they live? Yes, praise the Lord, they're grown. Uh -huh. In Dallas, in Euless, and uh, Tampa, and uh, where else? Norman. Uh, they all doing well in life financially? Business going good? No. They're struggling occasionally? Yeah. You know, what I'm doing here is yeah. I'm finding out about her and what her future needs are. Well, I said, well, when you're not taking care of kids, which you don't do much anymore. I know, I understand you have grandkids, which I understand grandkids are God's gift for having not killed your children. You know? what, do you, what do you do for fun? Um, I don't have a lot of hobbies. Don't have a lot of hobbies? That's cool. Well, um, what, what did you and your husband do for a living? Are y'all financially to where you can do whatever you want? I mean, play golf or do whatever? Okay, well, listen, i got to run right now. I don't want to hold you up in the grocery store. But why don't you give me your email address, and next time I'm in McKinney, I'll just drop you a note ahead of time. Maybe we can sit down and have coffee and get to know each other. What I just did is form, F-O-R-M. We talk to people about family, occupation, recreation, and money. That's how you get to know someone. And in those four topics, she will give you a dozen reasons, or a good one or two, as to why she might need Ambit, and you've got to resist giving it to her. You notice I didn't talk about Ambit Energy. And if she says, tell me what you do, I say, you know, I've got to go right now, but next time we'll talk about that. And I personally avoid talking about Ambit or what I do for a month, at least 28 days, unless she just begs me, like, Dad Gummit, you've got to tell me what you do or else, because then I've got a hot prospect that's excited and wants to know. But try and make a couple new friends. And I make it a practice that if I hadn't met two people during the day, then I can't go home. I mean, there's 7-Eleven on every corner, thanks to Jerry's family. You know, you go get you a cup of coffee or something, hang out somewhere and meet people. Because 
it is the lifeblood of your experience. So um, keep following that system. You'll have success. It takes a hundred people. You can start you a notebook right now, a composition notebook. And every time somebody sees the presentation and still says no, write their name down and whatever kind of weird stuff they told you and keep that notebook. And when it's got a hundred people in it, you're on your way to success. Okay, so eight out of ten won't look. I told you two, two, two. That means if you're doing that just five days a week, you're asking ten people a week, two of them are going to look. Two or three look. If two people tell you they look, I got more bad news. One of them was lying to you. They're not going to look either. <laughs> but that means every two weeks you got two or three people looking at the business and one out of every three that looks at it ends up getting in the business. So it's just a numbers game. In a month, you're a regional consultant. Two more months, you're a senior consultant. Six months later, you're an executive consultant. Why does that not happen? Because of the one thing you cannot have and be successful in this business. Procrastination. I mean, I said two, two, two every day. And people say, I'll do it every day. I say, you promised me. If I'm going to work with you, you got to do this every day. I'll do it every day. <clears throat> and then they say something like, well, except for, for Tuesdays. I mean, Tuesdays is my bullet night. And Thursday, my wife has an event, and i got to take care of the kids. So really, tea days are tough for them. So I, I can't do Tuesday. I can't do Thursday. I have trouble sometimes on Tatterday and Tundy. <laughs> Because everybody's going to do it later. Man, if you want to, you got to do it right now. you got to look for people that are willing to do it right now. Because I said talk to ten people a week, new prospects. If you drop that back to three, you didn't cut 70% on your growth. You probably cut 99% of it. On the other hand, if you add a third one to it, that's not just a 50% increase exponentially. That could be thousands of percent. Your success depends on how many times you get someone to show to look at the plan or someone on your team to show the plan. Whether they say yes or no, not your business. You be excited, you be sense of urgency, and you be committed and bold. If they don't see it, lucky for you, because they weren't the one you wanted. You don't you don't want I mean I've personally sponsored well over a hundred people. 75 of them, God bless them, they should have bought lottery tickets. That would have been a, a better chance for them because they just didn't do anything. It's funny, every once in a while I look on my download report and I see somebody I sponsor and I, I'm like, wow, I forgot they came into business. They just weren't here long enough. But the other 25 or 30, most of them did it part-time. But if you work with them right away and help them build their business, they'll bring you a few who bring you a few, bring you a few, and you find a diamond in the rough, and that's where you build it. But then out of the hundred and something I've sponsored, uh, about 11 of them now are millionaires, million dollar earners in Ambit. So you can say, wow, he's got 10 or 11 people that earn over a million dollars. Yeah, I'm a 90% failure. I have failed my way to success. How many people have been told no, laughed at? You've had family members tell you like you're going to go to jail or lose your house. <laughs> I like that lose your house one. I was like, man, I live in, in rural Texas. We got a lot of mobile homes there, but I had never seen one for $75, so I don't know how they lost, <laughs> lost their house. But you just have to continue. So if you raised your hand a minute ago, you're on the right track. Because I failed my way to success, and you can too. If you do it long enough, wrong enough, you'll get pretty good at it. And if you get pretty good at it and keep doing it, Pretty soon you reach a natural state where it becomes simpler for you to do. You know, most people will never reach the natural state where it just automatically happens. Most people stay in a mechanical state their whole career where they have to think about what they're going to say, think about what that person said. And I, there's mechanical people making six-figure incomes from this. So don't be bad. Don't feel bad about mechanical stage. If you get fortunate and you find yourself in the natural stage, then it, it just flows easier for you. Y'all got to tell me when I run out of time, Doug, because... we got about maybe three or four more minutes, and we'll take a quick break and start at seven. Next question. I got one question. Yes, sir. And I don't know how, as far as training, what this have to do with training, so to speak, but do you still get that exhilarating feeling whenever you sponsor a new person? Just like the guy you talked about a while ago you've been working on? I get, I get terribly excited every time I sponsor somebody. There's a filter in my brain, a little man over here says, they're probably going to quit. 
because I've seen it for a long time now. So my big thing is planning sessions. If I was lucky enough to sponsor Pat, it didn't happen. But if I was sponsoring him, and tonight he said, I'm going to join. I'm ready to get going. I'm going to say, okay, let's get you going. But I need you to promise me something. You've only seen it once or twice. There's going to be a lot of rejection in this business. I want to show you how to insulate yourself and handle that. So promise me you won't talk to anybody till we have a planning session. What time you get home from work? He says, 5 o'clock. I said, I'll be over about 6.30 or 7. I don't want to interrupt supper. I need an hour of your time. And I'm going to show you how to get started successfully. If you start test marketing this and calling people on your way home and asking family members, they're going to shoot you down and you're going to feel bad and I probably won't even see you tomorrow. So do I have your promise? That's what I ask everybody. Don't do it until we have a training. Then when we have, and it can be a long distance training session. You can sponsor them out of town. You still do that. During the training session, we briefly go over how the compensation promotion plan works and we talk about how to make a list. They don't need to know any more than getting a regional consultant uh, to start. But they do need to know how to make a list. And telling them to make a list won't get it done. Help them make a list. I help them get their first 10 or 15 names literally written on a pad in front of me. Then I stop them and say, hey, you can do this later. We've only got an hour. So who's the first person you'd call? Who's the person you thought of? And he says, Jim. I'd say, great. Get Jim on the phone right now. I don't want you to talk to him about him, but... I just want you to call and say, hey, Jim, I started a new business and my mentor, Steve's on the phone with us and introduce me and let me talk. I don't want the new guy to, to say anything other than this is Steve. And then I'm going to say, hey, uh, now listen, I'm going to put Pat back on the stand here. Pat's the new prospect. I say, listen, Pat, your friend Jim, Jim just joined the business and you'd probably agree that when you start something brand new, you don't know what to do, right? Exactly. Well, my job is to mentor him. And he said you were a good enough friend, you'd be a guinea pig. Would you mind just giving us four or five minutes and let him practice on you? There's no obligation to you. Will you do that for him? Sure. Okay, great. Now, what I got to do is I'm teaching him how to ask some questions. So these questions may seem dumb, but I need you to answer them for me. First, are you interested in making more money? That's a drop-dead deal for me if somebody says, not really. Okay, nice talking to you. Gotta go. I don't have another moment for that person. He says, absolutely. I say, great. Here come the dumb questions. How many people do you know that use electricity? Told you it was dumb. Do you think they'd rather pay less or maybe even get it for free? Well, if I have a program I could show you that will show them how they can save money and you and I can get paid for showing it to them, I'm not asking you to join. I'm not asking you to do anything else, I promise that. But would you give him that five minutes for Jim and just watch an online video and just see if you can point him in the right direction, tell him if it makes sense. Good, thanks. What a positive approach. He's helping his friend. I got him to look at the video. You know, don't, I know a lot of experts say, Pat, do you keep your income op options open when it comes to alternative businesses? That's, that's like too deep for me. Mine's, you want to make some money? You like to make money? And, and go through the questions and get his permission to be a guinea pig. Then on the next call, I'm going to say, Jim, let's do it again. And Jim's getting pretty excited, by the way, because one call, one appointment. The next guy we call says, I don't know who you are, but I can't believe you brought Jim into this stuff. And he's probably going to end up in jail over this. I say, hey, listen, we're sorry to take up your time. I got to go. I hang up and say, Jim, listen, the lights were on, but nobody was home, okay? He's not going to help you make money. Learn to laugh at the fact that people tell you no. And then I'll make two or three calls with me doing all the talking. I say, okay, now you're on the spot, Jim. I want you to tell him I'm on the phone, and I'm going to introduce it again. And I'm going to say, now, Pat, I'm going to have Jim practice on you. Jim, ask him those dumb questions. And Jim's going to try, and he may stumble a little bit when he stumbles. I'm right there with him. I pick up and say, no, 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 Pat, what he meant to say, he didn't mean to say that Chris Chambliss owned all the 7-Elevens in the world, what he meant to say. <laughs> and we'll, we'll correct him, and we'll practice that through five, six calls, which we'll get two or three appointments, and I say, now, that's what you need to do. And you need to realize, eight out of ten people are going to say, no, they won't look. And your job is not to convince them to look. Your job is to call somebody else until you find people that are open-minded, and when Two or three people watch it. I can assure you, you put them on the phone with me for a three-way call. One out of every three of them is going to join, maybe more. And the only thing between you and financial success here is will you make the calls? Because here's my rule. 
For the next 30 days, I expect to hear from you every day, every 48 hours at the least. If two days go by and I don't hear from you, I assume you quit. But for the next 30 days, if you want to run, I'll run with you. If you want to walk, I'll walk with you if I have time. But if you want to sit on the bench, I'm out of here. There's only two things I can tell you. If you make it through the 30 days, sometime in that period you'll either quit because this is too tough for you, or you'll make some money. Are you ready to get started? I give everybody that speech when they start because I want to let them know this is net work marketing, not net couch potato or luck marketing, you know. It's work, but it's simple work. Not easy. You know, I mean, my own family not only laughed at me, told me no. I, I, to this day, I don't have a single family member that is even a customer of mine. Uh, you know, I, I got my rejection over in a hurry and called my family first. But I, that just, instead of depressing me, that built up a little strength in me to say, oh, I'll show you. I'll show you. And if you ever want the best revenge, massive success is great revenge. I loved it. You know, my brother's gone now, but when my brother's still alive, you know, he, he told me he lived in Houston. He said, oh, Reliance always been good to me. And I wanted to say, well, next Christmas, you let Reliant buy kids for your toys for your kids, you know. But I just said, hey, I understand. And, you know, after four or five years, I said, uh, hey, I'm, uh, I'm coming through town. I'm, in, I'm taking my tour bus up to the East Coast. Love to have a cup of coffee. And then later it was, hey, uh, I'm on my way to East Coast to get on my yacht. Uh, you want to have a cup of coffee? Um, I got my revenge. I got my revenge. Uh